Now that the Poke Megatons have dropped and while we wait for E3 to arrive so we can hopefully get our hands on the game, a couple more fun bits of information have come out thanks to a big interview with head of development Junichi Masuda. And we're going to dive in and share those with you. What's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switchforce. Gabe is here. And now that sort of the tsunami of uh, reactions has washed away, I'm pretty pumped for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. We're like a week away from hopefully getting our hands on the titles, and this interview just made me even more excited to play. Yeah, likewise. I have actually gone back and played the first hour of Yellow, just sort of to refresh my memory, just because it's been so long since I played uh, those games. And, and like, yeah, I'm honestly super pumped for it now. Yeah, so uh, this was a big interview conducted by Eurogamer uh, with the uh, head honcho over at Game Freak, the Pokemon boss Junichi Masuda, as I mentioned, um, and and he talked a lot about sort of the mentality behind Pokemon Let's Go and some new newish details. I would say they've been hinted at, but kind of more fleshed out. The first one is how does Pokemon Go and Pokemon Let's Go uh, connect specifically? And he said it's very simple. In the Switch game, there's a connect button. You press that, and then in Pokemon Go, you press connect, and boom, Bluetooth, you're in. And he also gave a few more details on how that works. Once you do press those buttons, um, it will send your Pokemon over into a Safari Park type thing where you can see them moving around. You can go and interact with them and catch them. And he said there's some unrevealed mini games that will happen uh, if you move a lot of the same Pokemon. So my speculation here is that you'll either be able to like sort of build their stats. Like if you move a group of, I don't know, Rhyhorns over, then you'll be able to either like sort of combine them for a better Rhyhorn or maybe do mini games that allow you to enhance uh, the, the abilities they have or, you know, the attacks that they come over with and things like that, which sounds cool. I have a question about that. What is going to be the Pokemon that you farm the most in order to get, like, the strongest version possible? Again, assuming that that's how it's working. We don't, you know, know he didn't offer too many details, but let's assume that's how it is for a second. Which Pokemon are you farming? Staryu. Really? Yep. I want the world's greatest starfish. Yeah? So I want to have my own little aquarium. I, here, Here's my question. Okay, like, can you just create, like, sort of, like, a psychotic safari where you just, like, bring over, like, 200 Pokemon? There's got to be a limit, right? Like, there's got to be, like, yeah. okay, hey, this pen is only going to hold, like, 15, and then there's a water, you know, a little pool that can hold, you know, 15 over here. Like, there has to be limits, right? We can't just bring over 1,000 Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, I, just to answer my own question, I, I, I want to have the most powerful Machamp in existence. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's going to be a little tricky. Yeah. To have a lot of Machamps. Better get on that, game. Yeah. Um, and uh, Masuda has been getting on breaking some of Pokemon's core tenets. I thought this was really interesting. Um, he said that, you know, he has been director uh, on the main series Pokemon RPGs, and there's things that he's never broken. And one of them was the idea of going into battle against wild Pokemon, reducing their health, and then catching them. And he never wanted to change that, but for Let's Go, he decided to mix it up. And he wanted to create an experience for kids and shift towards a more casual, lighter experience. And so that was the reason for breaking that core tenant um, and removing it. And he talks about how, you know, he never wants Pokemon to be unapproachable. He, he never wants Pokemon to be something that is too uh, taken too far, he says, which I thought was like sort of an interesting just thought process because I, I never would have thought of Pokemon of any of them really as something that like went too far, but I guess it's so important for them over there that these do maintain uh, approachability and they do maintain a very kid friendly nature to introduce as they've you know stated over the years, like introduce each new generation to the Pokemon franchise. Yeah. I'm a little confused as to what he means here. I don't know how unapproachable Pokemon games are now. You know, with, with black, white, X, Y, you know, uh, Sun, Ultra Sun, and Monawa at this point being the newest entries. Like, I don't know how much in those games has changed since when I played the games, but I would wager that it's pretty similar. So I'm not super sure what he's getting at here. Maybe like this whole pipe dream that we had, right? I don't know if you remember this, but when we first started hearing about uh, Pokemon for Switch, like we talked about like maybe digging deeper into like stats and, and things like that. And that sounds like that's something they have zero interest in whatsoever. Yeah. I think it may also be a uh, foundationally just the style of gameplay. Although he does uh, say that it could be possible that the next Pokemon 
uh, does introduce more open world elements. Uh, the interviewer mentioned, you know, Nintendo has taken Mario and Zelda and really expanded upon the concepts and the foundations of those titles. Um, and he said, you know, I can't really commit either way, but if we find a way, I think it's possible. If we were to find a way to preserve the fun and kind of broad appeal of Pokemon and also have that kind of more open gameplay, then that is one possibility. It's hard to say right now. Uh, but then he goes into his, his statements on approachability. So I don't foresee that being the case. Um, he does say that uh, Pokemon 2019 has been in development for a long time. He, he then qualifies by saying, oh, let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee have been as well. But I almost feel like 2019 has been in development longer. I have no reason to officially believe that, but it, I just kind of get the sense that these are more, I don't want to say quickly developed, but that the the, the the real, you know, console game as we we're expecting is, you know, is 2019. Yeah, well, I mean, that would make sense. They have a blueprint for these, so maybe they have to do, like, less work. They don't have to, like, flesh out new region. They definitely don't have to flesh out new Pokemon. Story stuff is very similar uh, to Pokemon Yellow, so they're saving a lot of time there. So I I'm sure this also took a, a great deal of effort. But, yeah, I I'm sure, like, the next iteration is probably what most of the efforts are going into. Yeah, and he also mentions that the game world, the overworld, the map is very true to Pokemon Yellow and that the story beats are similar. Um, they asked him if there would be any references to other games that have come out since Pokemon Yellow and he said, unfortunately, all I can say is that they're based on the Pokemon Yellow version and more details besides that are something that I hope people will look forward to. Uh, he was asked if Pokemon Let's Go could become a series of its own, which I think is an interesting question. You know, if this could be a whole separate line of games, even when they do release 2019 uh, as part of the core Pokemon, and then they have this Let's Go series that is, I guess, effectively the continuation of Pokemon Go. Um, he said, so I'd say there's a possibility of that should the game sell really well. Uh, and obviously, a lot of people play them. Right now, we're focusing on development. Um, but so, you know, that to me would be interesting if there were these sort of two simultaneously running franchises that I don't, at that point, I don't know what you do, alternate every other year or, or how you sort of space those out. But um, that would be, you know, definitely... Uh, a, a interesting future that's a thought that i had right and revisiting just the pokemon series in general right i went to this wikipedia where you know i was looking through like every generation so far and the starters and things like that and i did think that i i i, I told myself like hey what if they do like let's go something and something for gold and silver where they pick i don't want to like name any other starters because people have their favorites but you know you pick two two starters from each one of the generations and you kind of turn this into this like let's go thing i did like wonder that if that's something that they might want to do going forward and it sounds like at the very least they're going to think about it depending on sales yeah i think it would be interesting i think it would be uh, disappointing personally because it's one thing to remake like oh pokemon yellow or inspired by or whatever but to just go like when does that cycle stop? Are we going to get Let's Go Sun and Moon, you know, in 10 years then? Or, you know, how does that how does that work? I don't know how well, that goes. Well, hopefully, hopefully by that point, we have at least like three or four more generations. <laughs> you keep the cycle going. Just, it's just a <laughs> one giant whirlwind. Um, he does mention that he really wants uh, a lot of kids to play this game, more kids to get into Switch. He says that one thing um, that he, one of the reasons for him that he, you know, did this Pokemon Yellow inspiration remake whatever you want to call it is that it was 20 years ago and so he imagined that maybe some parents who played yellow uh, when they were kids will now have kids their own and they can you know help each other out and kind of play and experience that together that is like such a pure like purely good thought like hey like <laughs> you know 20 years a lot of our audience from back then maybe they have kids and it'd be neat if they could play this together that's like so like great um you know yeah unfortunately or fortunately however you want to look at it neither of us have kids so that's not something we can experience but yeah. I, i'm sure that you know a certain uh portion of the audience is going to be able to do that and that'll be really cool yeah he mentions that uh it'll be fun for people who don't know that brock was a gym leader to find that out um and just kind of again continues this mentality of like pokemon needs to be um accessible they want to merge the pokemon go and core pokemon audiences build the franchise and, you know, put these games out this year and, and then get back to work on the 2019 titles. So I think it's a, a pretty good read. If you want to go through all of it, we covered definitely the main, uh, I feel, interesting points. But if you want to read the whole thing, I'll put a link in the description down below and we'll keep you posted. Hopefully we get more details on Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee at E3. 
I still maintain excitement. In spite of Masuda saying that these are four kids, casual, lighter experience, I still think there's enough of those core tenants, in spite of the removal of the wild Pokemon battles, to make these enjoyable. Um, and I'm, I'm still going to be picking it up 100%. Yeah, same here. I am quite excited for it. I think the fact that I haven't played a Pokemon game in such a long time is definitely fueling that excitement. But hey, the excitement the excitement is there nonetheless. Absolutely. So let us know in the comments down below how you feel about some of Masuda's comments and uh, what you think about a few of these details in terms of the mini games that will help you bring Pokemon from Go to Let's Go. Uh, the idea that future Pokemon games could incorporate open world as long as they don't take complexity too far and if you're one of those people that played pokemon yellow as a kid and now have a kid it'd be fun to hear from you as well so let us know that in the comments down below until next time everybody make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from the switch and pokemon make sure to follow us on twitter and discord we'll be at e3 hopefully we'll have pokemon footage and you'll want to know as soon as that goes up and then for myself and gabe have a great day we love you switch force out